Hi guys, in this video I want to talk about project management in Highs. So let's open Highs and just get stuck straight in. So the first time you you open Highs after you've installed it, you'll get this pop-up. Do you want to create a new project? Highs has a built-in project management system so you can keep all the files and everything related to an instrument project separate from another instrument project. And we're going to look at that folder system now. So I'm going to click OK and we get this pop-up for creating a new project directory. And what you can do here is you can click make a new folder and I'm just going to call it highs project. And select that folder, click OK. And we get this project property. So we can see it's put in the project name already, highs project, but if you were making a, a you could call this whatever you wanted. If you're making a brass instrument, you call it a brass instrument, whatever you like. Then we've got project version. And this is quite important. When you come to doing user presets, it draws from this and it's, uh, it comes into play in other areas as well. You generally want to give this three numbers. You want to have a major version, a minor version number, and a revision number for patches and bug fixes. And just separate those with dots. You can add a description to your project. There's a few other things here we don't need to worry about just yet. We've got this embed audio files in plugin. So that's if you want your audio files to be embedded in the plugin when you export it, or if you want them to be separate uh, standalone. And that'd be good if you wanted the audio files to be on a different driver in a different folder to where you actually have your uh, VST plugins. We don't need to worry about anything else in here for now. So we click OK and the new project is created. So we can have a look on my desktop where it's created the folder. So we'll come to that in just a minute and have a look through that. Now, if you've used Hives already, you won't get that pop up at the beginning about creating a new project. So the way you'd get it is to go file, create new project folder, and then it takes us through this same routine again. And if you're in an existing project and you want to change those settings, you can go down to settings, project properties, and you get this window again. So if you're updating the version number, the project name description, etc., you can edit that here. Okay, let's have a look at the folder structure that's created. So this is where all the files to do with a particular project should be stored generally. There's, there's some variation to that. So audio files. This is not for samples, this is for things like impulse responses. Binaries is where compiled plugins will be kept. So once you compile your instrument to a VST or an AU plugin, you can put that in here. And there will be, it isn't implemented yet, but there will be a system in highs to export the plugins with one click. And it's not far off from that now. And that will work by going up here to File, Export, and export as instrument plugin. In the images folder, you're going to keep things like GUI, uh, background images, control images for knobs and buttons and sliders and things like that. They all go in here and they'll be embedded in the compiled plugin. Presets. Okay, so if we're going to make a new instrument in high, so we've got our project, but you can have a number of uh, different instruments you're working on, and these are saved in the folder called presets. So we go to file, save, and it says, do you want to save this preset? We'll click OK, and we can give it a name. We'll call this my preset. And you can see it changes the name of this master container here to my preset as well. And if we go in this folder now, we can see we've got my preset. If you've got auto saving enabled, you'll also see the auto saves uh, put in here as well every time an auto save is made. Sample maps. So let's go back into highs. We'll add a sampler. You can see we've got a mapping editor here. This is kind of familiar um, from other samplers. I think all samplers have something that looks like this. And this is where you drag your samples in and map them to the keyboard layout. So you drag your samples in, you map them, and you can save that as a sample map. And that will appear in this folder here, sample maps. So something that's unique to highs is that you can swap sample maps on the fly. So let's say you have two flute instruments, but you want to use the same basic uh, preset setup uh, for both of them, but you've got two separate sets of samples. So you map 
your flute samples in here, save it as a sample map. Then you can right click, select new sample map, import your samples for your second flute, and then right click, save this as a sample map. And then using your script, you can swap between the first flute and the second flute sample maps, and it'll swap them in uh, live. So it's a really neat way of doing it without having to create two completely separate instruments. You can use just a single instrument and uh, swap out the samples. And of course, it doesn't have to be two different instruments that you're swapping with sample maps. It can be the same instrument, but a different sample layout. There's all kinds of things you can do with that. The samples folder is where you actually keep your instrument samples files. So this is, uh, again, audio files, but these are the actual samples that you'll map. Sometimes it's desirable not to keep your samples in the project folder. For instance, if you're actually going to be using the instrument as well, and you want those samples to be on your samples drive, uh, you'll want to redirect the samples folder. And the easiest way to do that is to go to tools, redirect sample folder, and then you can point it to a different location. So I'm just going to point it to my desktop for now. Just hit OK. And if you go back to the samples folder, you can see it's put this file in here. It says link windows. If you're on a Mac, it'll say, I think it's link Mac. And if we have a look at that, let's open that with notepad. You can see it just puts the path to my desktop. And we created this file by going to the tools menu in highs, but you can actually just create this file yourself um, in the folder. You don't have to do it through highs, but I think doing it through highs is, is the easiest way. Okay. The scripts folder. Now, Highs is a really good JavaScript uh, scripting system, and you can have your scripts embedded within the instrument, or you can have them stored externally. And if you've got them externally, you can put them in the scripts folder. Now, I personally have a load of scripts that I want to use in several projects. So I have them in a folder that's outside all of my project folders, and I can just read them in and share them between projects. And I'll show you how to do that in another video. But if I have scripts that are related only to one project, then they go in that project scripts folder and we can import them into our instrument uh, using an include statement. And we'll look at that when we come on to scripting. Okay, user presets. These are different to the presets folder. The presets folder is not necessarily the best name. You can think of presets as the actual instrument. Whereas user presets are kind of like a snapshot of the instrument. So if you were to open an instrument and tweak some knobs and stuff, and you wanted to save that as a preset so you could come back to it, that's what you get in this user presets folder. Any user presets you create when you're building your instrument will be embedded in the plugin when you compile it, and they will essentially be read-only factory presets. So you can ship your instrument with some presets that you've already set up. Well, the user of the instrument will also be able to make their presets and they'll get a separate uh, sort of internal folder to handle that. XML preset backups. So you have the presets files in here. You can see there are a couple of auto saves in there now as well. So there's my preset, which we saved. Now the .hip is readable in highs. It's a highs project file. But if we wanted to read it, if we wanted it to be human readable, so we can go in and edit it, we need it in a different format. So that's what the XML preset backups is for, to make a human readable version. And we can create that by going to File, Save File as XML Backup. And you can see it automatically opens the correct folder on my desktop and in the project. So we'll just call this My Preset, and we'll hit Save on that. And it asks us if we want to strip the editor view information. That's um, uh, that's if you're using a version control system. If you are, click OK. Um, if not, just click Cancel. I want to hit Cancel on that. Uh, if you have any scripts in your instrument that aren't already external, you can hit OK here, and it will export them into external files. We don't need to do that, so I'm going to click Cancel there as well. And if we go back to that folder, we can see the preset is here. And we can see this is the XML output of that instrument so far. So nice and human readable. If you want to read that back into the instrument, you can go to File and then Open XML Backup. And again, it automatically goes to that folder and there's the preset file. And we actually get a preview here, which is nice. Now, if you're working on a project already, you've created your project folder, but you want to add a different preset, you can go to File and Save As to save this preset as another name. And then you'll basically have two copies of the same preset. Uh, so you can work on one without editing the other. And that's one way to do it. 
You can also go to File and New File and that will create a brand new preset. Uh, it doesn't overwrite the old one though, the old one's still there. And of course you can always make your XML backups. If you've got multiple projects you're working on, you can open a different project by going to Load Project. Or you can see a list of your recently opened projects here. And if you're in a project but you've forgotten where you've put the folder, this folder, if you've forgotten where you've actually put the project folder, you can access that by going to Show Project Folder in Explorer and it will open it up at the location. If you've already mapped your samples in your instrument but they're not stored in the samples folder of your project and you'd like to bring them into the samples folder, you can just go to Tools and select Collect External Files into Project Folder and that will bring in those samples and uh, put them in the samples folder. Alright guys, I hope you found this useful. I hope that's shed some light on the project management system in Highs. There's more information about this on the Highs website in the blog. There's a link in the video description below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below on YouTube and I'll get around to answering them. Or you can catch me on the Highs forum. Again, the link's in the description. But if you go to highs.audio, the uh, forum link's there. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.